number 10, younger women. In his special, Rock pokes fun at women his own age and then makes a comment about having his eyes on Doja Cat instead, who is 30 years younger than him. In this particular bit, Rock explained why he prefers dating women who are under 40. The comedian pointed out that a young woman is happy if he buys her a pair of nice shoes, while a 40 slash 50 year old woman would ask him to help him fix her roof. I mean, men joking about liking younger women is certainly nothing new in comedy, and once again, Rock really didn't bring anything unique or interesting to the topic. Like a lot of his other material, it just kind of felt corny, maybe if he was on his first special, but come on. Anyway, Rock then said, don't hate the player, hate the game. I don't get rich and stay in shape to talk about Anita Baker. I'm trying to F Doja Cat. I mean, the joke had potential, but trying to F the singer as a punchline? Interesting choice. At number 9, lesson learned. Rock talked about his children in the new special and more specifically about how he has tried to prevent them from becoming spoiled. The comedian told the story of how his oldest daughter Lola went on a school trip to Portugal in her senior year, but while there, she and her friends snuck out to go drinking. Quote, of course they got busted, rich white schools, they don't play that sh. He then went on to explain that the parents of the other students hired lawyers to fight to keep their children in school, but Rock decided Lola needed to learn a lesson. Apparently his daughter was not taking the situation seriously, so Rock went to the dean and actually got her kicked out. He apparently told the dean, I need you to kick my daughter out of this school. I need my black child to learn her lesson right now before she's on OnlyFans. Please kick my child out of effing school. An interesting scare tactic, but Lola is now in culinary school. He also claimed that neither his wife nor daughter found out about his talk with the dean. At number 8, hot take. Halfway through the special, Rock included some jokes about the ongoing US debate of whether or not women should have the right to terminate their pregnancy or not. Some states have set up laws to ban women from choosing and Rock basically took both sides. Rock admitted that he is pro-life because he loves his daughters but also wants his daughter to live in a world where they have the complete control of their bodies. Clearly Rock is not very educated on the topic because that is quite literally the definition of pro-choice but not the point. The comedian then added, I believe women should have the right to terminate babies. I believe you should have the right to terminate as many babies as you want. Terminate them all. I don't give an F. But let's not get it twisted. It is terminating a baby. Of course he didn't use the word terminate in his actual special but you get the gist. I mean people have said a lot worse about the topic so props to Rock for that but I really don't think we should be taking any medical or scientific advice from the comedian. To end his bit Rock joked, I think you should be able to terminate that baby until its first report card. Again, not the quality of joke I would expect from a seasoned comedian but what the heck do I know about stand up comedy. Number 7, Christopher Boozy, the founder and CEO of Bud Sentinel responded to the comedy special in a tweet of his own where he wrote, Will Smith smacked Chris Rock not Jada Smith. So instead of focusing on Will Smith he took shots at Jada Smith again. He came off as a small and angry little man. Funnily enough he wasn't alone in his opinion. Another user wrote, let me get this straight. So you all clown Will Smith and put the pressure on him and make him apologize but y'all are okay with Chris Rock getting up there on another stage and disrespecting him and his family again which got him slapped in the first place. The original incident occurred while Chris was introducing the award for best documentary and joked about Jada Pinkett Smith's haircut. He referenced her buzz cut and called her G.I. Jane. That was when Will Smith silently got up on stage, walked over to Chris and slapped him across the face on live television. But some fans have always defended his actions because they believe he was simply standing up for his wife who's been very vocal about her alopecia diagnosis. So Chris is doubling down on the jokes and this time it's so much worse. He's made fun of their relationship, Will Smith's masculinity and put his entire movie career on blast. At number 6, The Smiths. Clearly Rock talked about the infamous Oscar slap during his special but to go along with that he also talked about both Will and Jada Smith. Basically Rock accused Smith of practicing selective outrage at the Oscars by getting mad at the comedian instead of his wife. In the past Jada technically had an affair while married to Will but following that coming out they revealed that they had been on a break at the time and have since opened up their marriage, ultimately giving up on a monogamous marriage. This is what Rock was referencing. Rock said everybody called that man a bee. They called his wife a predator and who'd he hit? Me. Rock then also included that he's a man Smith knows he can beat up. Rock also talked about previously being a fan but now he watches Smith's movies much differently. As an example Rock said that now he watches Emancipation just to see Smith treated poorly adding that now Rock roots for the bad guys. Coming number 5, Ethan Klein. h 3 3s Ethan Klein was another comedian that was quick to defend Chris Rock and condemn Will Smith's actions. Following the slap heard around the world, the H3 host took to Twitter to share his thoughts on what happened. In the tweet Ethan said, Will Smith just a walking L since his wife decided to start weekly humiliating him on her Facebook show. Probably 
Chloe should deal with whatever trauma he has with her instead of punching Chris Rock in the face for an extremely tame joke. He needs to be escorted out of the Oscars. He then went on to say, Will Smith won and got a standing ovation. I'm in awe. The show went on like nothing happened. Will Smith punched a comedian for doing his job. He's a celebrity in the front row of the Oscars where it's normal to be roasted. Bad taste or not, defending Will equals brain rot. At number four, the royal family. No one was safe from rock when it came to selective outrage, not even the British royal family. In 2021, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry sat down for a bombshell interview with Oprah Winfrey about their situation and strained relationship with the royal family. Rock claimed that Markle had no right to complain because she should have known about the family's long history of racism. Rock said, quote, She hit the effing light skin lottery and still going on complaining, acting all dumb like she don't know nothing. Going on Oprah like, I didn't know. I had no idea how racist they were. It's the royal family. The comedian ended the bit with, They're the original racists. They invented colonialism. They're the OGs of racism. They're the Sugar Hill Gang of racism. I mean, Rock does have a point there, but I feel like this bit isn't very unique. Especially with all of the Meghan and Harry drama, we've already heard a lot of jokes about them kind of recently. I guess Roth wanted to make sure he included as many trending topics as he could. In at number three, Jamila Jamil. Actress Jamila Jamil also had some thoughts about the 2022 Oscars incident that is making waves across the world. Attached to a Malcolm X quote that says, The most disrespected person in America is the black woman. The most unprotected person in America is the black woman. The most neglected person in America is the black woman. Jamila wrote in her tweet, Will Smith said, Not today, a man big enough to absolutely floor him, slapped him softly enough that Chris barely moved because he made fun of his wife's alopecia on a world stage. Don't say hashtag protect black women for two years and then only condemn Will here. Come on. At number two, Elon Musk. Earlier into his special, Rock criticized a number of large companies calling their support of social issues performative as they're charging such high prices. Things took a bit of a weird turn, however, when the comedian started talking about Tesla CEO and owner of Twitter, Elon Musk, and for a lack of a better word, his bodily fluids. Rock said, you know what Elon Musk does every time he sells a Tesla? He gets his D sucked. Interesting take, but Rock amped things up even more by following up with, that's why he looks so weird because his body has negative cum. He's the richest man on earth. No one has lower cum levels than Elon Musk. A very interesting concept to write a bit about, to say the least. Rock then continued adding that Jason Momoa is the only man who comes close to Musk's ability to pick up women. Rock and Musk seemingly do have a relationship because the CEO joined Rock on stage during one of his shows last year in San Francisco. And at number one, the reviews. The most embarrassing part of this entire special was probably the reviews that came with it. A lot of people concluded that his material was a bit blah and that Rock might be becoming a little rusty. On Twitter, at Power123Trust said, I give the Chris Rock special a 5 out of 10. Everything he said about wokeness and selective outrage was tired, and the bits about Will Slap have already been joked about by a billion people, and by now it's stale. Comparing Kelly to MJ was apples and oranges, he's done better. Eric Diggins from NPR tweeted, Main thing I learned from Chris Rock's live stand up special for Netflix, selective outrage, he's still pretty pissed at Will and Jada Pinkett Smith, and it ain't necessarily helping his comedy. I think the main verdict I found from reading reviews is that the special was really just underwhelming. USA Today said Rock had become a sad old man yelling at clouds, adding he's crotchety, he's mean, he's predictable, and boring. Rock is a great comedian who's been around for decades, so him using a bunch of hacky material about things that have already been joked about to death is pretty disappointing. I really think the expectations were maybe just a little too high for selective outrage. Number 10, The View. Just a couple of days after after his special, the ladies of the iconic talk show weighed in with their thoughts on the way that the comedian addressed the infamous slap. Sonny Hostin said, It's taken him a year to respond. He responded in a $40 million Netflix special, which I think is brilliant. And that was his truth. That's how he experienced it. Alyssa Farah Griffin agreed and thought that he nailed it. She said, I thought he came back swinging, no pun intended. But I did think it's smart that he waited a year. Comedians oftentimes grapple with things different than other people do. And I think him turning back to comedy was the way to do it. Take the narrative back and the whole thing is super funny. Anna Navarro said she believes that he's entitled to say his truth and that she was even happier that he's making money out of it. She also said that the show was funny as hell and it had her on the floor laughing. Whoopi Goldberg said, there is very little that Chris Rock will do that I don't appreciate. He doesn't pull punches, he says what he thinks and he takes the consequences. He's not afraid of saying how he feels and I know that is not always easy. Number 9, Marlon Wayans. The comedian praised Chris Rock for finally addressing 
last year's Oscar slap in his new special. He went on CBS Mornings and said, It was good to hear him speak about it. You could tell it was passionate. What you heard was somebody that was hurt, somebody that was finding their way to heal in that moment. Marlon said he's spoken to Chris and Will separately and thinks both men are still hurt. He said, I think Will's hurt has nothing to do with Chris, maybe something that's happened in Will's life. That was a snap moment. He said that if he had his way, he would pull the two men into the principal's office and say, We have to stop this. He hopes one day that they can reconcile and get past that infamous incident. Quote, I don't think it's ever cool to hit somebody, but I do think that at some point we can't let that just sit there. I think for our children, for our people, that we can't just sit in pain and not come to terms. I think we all make mistakes, but at some point, let's sit down and come to the table and fix this. Number 8 Stephen A. Smith The ESPN personality spoke about the special on his No Mercy podcast, where he defended Chris Rock. He said, everybody's got to step back and take it. He was the one that was slapped by her husband. Chris Rock was making a statement that she instigated it. Last year, Stephen put Will Smith on blast and said that there was no excuse for attacking Chris. He tweeted, I just saw the raw footage. Will Smith should be ashamed of himself. It was a G.I. Jane joke. Total BS. If it were The Rock or someone like that instead of Chris Rock, would he have done that? In another tweet, he wrote, Total BS by Will Smith. If his night is ruined because of this, he deserves it. The man has Denzel and Bradley Cooper trying to calm him down. For what? A joke about his wife in G.I. Joe? Come on. That was embarrassing. A very, very bad look. Love Will, but not after this BS. From there, Steven shared a video where he continued to rip apart the actor and said, That was a shameful act for him to commit tonight. Go up on stage and slap Chris Rock like that. He's lucky he didn't get his A kicked, particularly after the event was over. And number seven, the slap. Of course, Rock couldn't have put out a stand up special without mentioning being slapped by Will Smith. Towards the end of the special, Rock says, You all know what happened to me getting smacked by Shug Smith. Everybody knows. Everybody effing knows. I got smacked like a year ago and people are like, did it hurt? It still hurts. I got summertime ringing in my ears. He then goes on to state that he is not a victim with, you will never see me on Oprah or Gail crying. You will never see it. It's never going to happen. F that shh. I took that ish like Pacquiao. Rock also compared himself to Smith saying that Will is significantly bigger than him. Well, Will Smith does movies with his shirt off. You've never seen me do a movie with my shirt off. Will Smith played Muhammad Ali in a movie. You think I auditioned for that part? I played Pookie in New Jack City. Rock apparently called Smith after the incident, but the actor never picked up. Finally, Rock explained why he didn't hit back, stating, because I got parents, I was raised, and you know what my parents taught me? Don't fight in front of white people. Number 6 Taj Jackson Michael Jackson's nephew has now responded to selective outrage on Twitter, and his review was not exactly glowing. He wrote, Chris Rock has used my family as punching bags for his entire career, yet I'm supposed to feel bad for him getting slapped and humiliated on the Oscars? After seeing a new clip of him attacking my dead uncle in the first few minutes of his retaliation I'm still relevant special, I have three things to say. What did my family ever do to you to warrant these decades of your constant bullying disguised as jokes? And just because you were bullied early on in life doesn't give you the excuse to bully others now. Thank you Will Smith. What he's referring to of course is one of the most controversial jokes in the special, where Chris said, I'm all for social justice. The thing I have a problem with is the selective outrage. He said, it's the kind of people who play Michael Jackson songs but won't play R. Kelly. Same crime, one of them just has better songs. So that obviously did not go down too well with fans of MJ. Those disturbing allegations have been following the singer for decades, so it's no surprise that his family would be upset by anyone trying to rehash them. In number five, Alec Baldwin. Most people understood why comedians would stand in solidarity with Chris Rock, but a lot of people expected actors to only get behind Will Smith and his unscrupulous actions. Taken to his private Twitter page, Alec Baldwin tweeted, I'm not reading much about how or even if the producers attended to Chris, but I love you Chris Rock, and I'm sorry the Oscar has turned into the Jerry Springer show. Alec also needed to say something because a lot of people on Twitter were quick to draw comparisons between the Will Smith slap and what happened on the set of Rust. One person tweeted, Don't worry about the Academy punishing Will Smith. If they do, it will either be for two weeks like Whoopi, six days like Jesse, or not at all like Alec Baldwin. Hollywood is totally immune from justice. Number four, Tony Rock. In response to Chris's latest special, Tony Rock continued to show support for his brother. In a new interview, he says, I hope everyone renews their Netflix subscription or steal somebody password. Just watch it, see it, enjoy it. It's a good night in the Rock household. He referenced the Oscars incident and said, if you're going to heckle a comedian, always remember that they got to hold the microphone last. Tony was actually close friends with Will Smith at one point, but after the slap, he was one of the first people to call him out on his own comedy show. He said, if you think you're going to walk up on this stage, this ain't the mother effing Oscars. He threatened to fight back if Will ever tried the same thing with him. In response, Will mentioned Tony in his apology video and said, I want to apologize to Chris's family. Family, specifically, Tony.
Tony Rock. You know, we had a great relationship. You know, Tony Rock was my man and this is probably irreparable. Sadly, that does seem to be the case as one Twitter user then asked Tony if he approved of Will's apology and he responded simply by saying no. Coming number three, Tom Segura. After the Academy tweeted, the Academy does not condone violence of any form. Tonight we are delighted to celebrate our 94th Academy Awards winners who deserve this moment of recognition from their peers and movie lovers around the world. In response, Tom quote tweeted that and said, LOL, you fully endorsed it, F Will Smith. He then took things even further and said in another tweet, F Will Smith's candy butt smacking a dude four inches shorter and 50 pounds lighter. He's just in his feelings cause his bald headed bee been effing around on him for years and he takes it. We all know who he wishes he could slap, hashtag cuck will. Number two, attacking his career. One of the hilarious memes posted about the new special shows you that not everyone thought it was a great set. Someone posted a video of Marty from Madagascar dancing with the caption, Chris Rock be talking so much for someone whose major career accomplishment is this 10 second clip. So obviously there was quite a few people who did not think it was a valid response to the slap. Many people even felt that he went way too far with the jokes. Right away, Chris started off the episode by saying, I'm going to try and do a show tonight without offending anybody. I'm going to try my my best because you never know who might get triggered. People always say words hurt. Anyone who says words hurt has never been punched in the face. After that, Chris saved his other jokes about the slap until the last 10 minutes of the show. And that was when he completely unloaded. He said, you all know what happened to me, getting smacked by Suge Smith. It still hurts. I got a summertime ringing in my ears, but I'm not a victim, baby. You'll never see me on Oprah or Gail crying. So he was making fun of the fact that Will did a series of emotional interviews after the incident, which is not the approach that he would have taken. And coming in at number one, Will Smith not caring. Someone tweeted out a video of the actor dancing while holding his Oscar. The caption was, this is why nothing Chris Rock says will ever matter. Cause he slapped him, won an Oscar and went to a party rapping his own music afterwards. So obviously there were some people who thought that Will simply did not care about Chris's feelings whatsoever. In late November, he spoke with Trevor Noah on The Daily Show and described the slap as an explosion of anger that was years in the making. But he also seemed to partially put the blame back on Chris. He he claimed that he has no independent recollection of that fight, but that he understands how shocking that was for people to see. He said, I was gone, dude. That was a rage that had been bottled up for a really long time. I understand the pain. Will also claimed that there were other things he was going through that night which no one actually knew about, and that's why he erupted in violence. He said, that was a horrific night, as you can imagine. You know, there's many nuances and complexities to it, but at the end of the day, I just lost it, you know? He then says, you just never know what someone is going through, which is very true. Hey guys. In this video, we're going to look at the outrage against Chris Rock's comedy special, the way Selena Gomez has angered her fans, and Rebel Wilson dissing Meghan Markle. First up, everyone's talking about Chris Rock's controversial new special, Selective Outrage. It's Netflix's first global live streaming event, but that's not the reason why it's hit the headlines. Chris has commented on the Oscar slap in his other stand up shows. Chris has commented on the Oscar slap in his other stand up shows, but this time he goes on a savage tirade against not only Will. Will Smith, but his wife Jada Pinkett Smith. There's no other way to put this, it was absolutely brutal. He starts off by saying, I'm going to do a show tonight without offending anybody. I'm going to try my best because you never know who might get triggered. People always say words hurt. Anyone who says words hurt has never been punched in the face. Chris saved his other jokes about the slap until the last 10 minutes of the show, but that was when he completely unloaded. He said, you all know what happened to me, getting smacked by Suge Smith. It still hurts. I got a summertime ringing in my ears, but I'm not a victim, baby. You'll never see me on Oprah or Gail crying. I took that hit like Pacquiao, but instead of focusing on the slap, Chris puts Will and Jada's relationship on blast. He said, Smith practices selective outrage. Selective outrage because everyone knows what the F happened. Everyone really knows that I had nothing to do with that. I didn't have any entanglements. An entanglement for people that don't know what everyone else will is that his wife was effing her son's friend. Chris then said that he has no idea why two talented people would put something like that on the internet. He points out that everyone in Hollywood talks smack about their open relationship, but Will waited to reassert his masculinity until he could attack a smaller, weaker man. Since the events of that night, Chris has said that people asked him why he didn't hit Will back. 
In response, he said, because I got parents. You know what, my parents taught me, don't fight in front of white people. But a lot of his criticism obviously falls on Jada. He claimed that she was the one who started the incident because she hurt Will way more than he hurt him. Chris also claims that in 2016, she pressured him to quit his job as host of the Oscars in solidarity with Will because he didn't get nominated for his movie Concussion, which is ridiculous when you think about it. But the Smiths were far from his only target in the special. The comedian also hit on a wide range of topics in the first 50 minutes, including reproductive rights, racism in America, gender identity and wokeness. And this is where the title of his special comes in. Chris says, I'm all for social justice. The thing I have a problem with is the selective outrage. He said, it's the kind of people who play Michael Jackson songs but won't play R. Kelly. Same crime, one of them just has better songs. The comedian also makes it clear that he resents privileged people and has very little sympathy for someone like Meghan Markle. He said he was unmoved by her complaining in the Oprah interview and said that she shouldn't be so shocked by the prejudices within the royal family. Chris also delved into his own romantic life post-divorce and said, I'm trying to date women my age, which is 10 to 15 years younger than me. Don't hate the player, hate the game. I didn't get rich and stay in shape to talk about Anita Baker. I'm trying to F Doja Cat. Selective Outrage was his sixth stand-up special and his second for Netflix after 2018's Tambourine. But for most people, this special really gave them what they wanted to see, Chris being completely open about his side of the Oscar story. In fact, it was such a highly publicized disaster that the Academy has now implemented a new crisis team for the upcoming event in order to stop it from happening again. The CEO CEO Bill Kramer said, It is our hope that we will be prepared for anything that we may not anticipate right now, but that we're planning for just in case it does happen. These crisis plans allow us to say, This is the group that we have to gather very quickly. The Academy's president, Janet Yang, also admitted that they dropped the ball by waiting too long to respond to the slap. She said, I'm sure you all remember we experienced an unprecedented event at the Oscars. What happened on stage was fully unacceptable, and the response from our organization was inadequate. Although no one knows exactly exactly how these crisis teams would have been able to respond to something that happens so quickly. They obviously want to prepare themselves if it were to ever happen again. You could also call that the Will Smith effect. But the good news is we only have to wait one week until this year's awards. Moving on, Selena Gomez has gotten herself into a bit of hot water with her latest message. The singer took to TikTok on Sunday to beg her followers to be kinder to people online. In the first post, she thanked her fans and wrote, I love you all so much. I'm deeply grateful for each and every one of you humans. You make me unbelievably happy. And in the second post, she said, please be kinder and consider others' mental health. My heart has been heavy and I only want good for everyone. In that message, she almost sounds like she's condemning all the hate that's been directed at Hailey Bieber because it's obviously gone very far at this point. But even though she might have good intentions, a lot of people don't see it that way. In response to the post, fans wrote things like, oh, now she cares about mental health and praying for Selena Gomez's downfall. One user tweeted, it's so easy to come online and tell your fans to be nicer after you practically set the world on fire last week. In response to the post, influencer and Twitch streamer Michaela called Selena the biggest manipulator and said her fans just eat it all up. Another user agreed and wrote, please be kinder and consider others' mental health. Well, why doesn't she take her own advice because she considered no one when commenting consecutively on seven different TikToks, including hate accounts on another woman and getting four other women dragged too, and family members who were minors. When you take a look at the arguments against Selena, most of it is people accusing her of playing the victim and getting her fans to send hate to Hailey Bieber so she didn't have to do it herself. Some even went as far as accusing her of waiting until the bullying reached its peak before she stepped in and said something, all to try and look innocent. But does this have any truth to it at all? Well, one thing that Selena has in abundance right now is fans, and everyone knows that. Since the feud started, she's gained more than 10 million followers on Instagram, making her the most followed woman on the platform. Hailey, on the other hand, has lost a combined total of 1 million followers on social media. She's lost around 800,000 on Instagram and more than 300,000 on TikTok. Next, there is evidence that Selena went on a commenting spree where she seemed to support her fans who made videos attacking Hailey. In one TikTok where one of her fans said, does anyone else just feel really bad for Selena Gomez? In a TikTok, one of her fans said, does anyone else 
must just feel really bad for Selena Gomez. Like, can you imagine going through a breakup so publicly with a guy that you were in love with for like seven years, and then two months later he just marries someone? In response, the singer commented under the video saying, that made me cry, thank you. In another TikTok, a fan said she was officially supporting Selena after all the mean girl bullying she's been receiving. The post called out the two women as bullies, and Selena just commented, I love you, under the video. Then she did something a little more obvious. A video resurfaced of Hailey in 2017 when she was a host on Drop the Mic. When Taylor Swift's name was mentioned, she was seen pretending to gag. Now this video is pretty old and it could be considered a joke on Hailey's part, but Selena assumed that she was being dead serious. So she left a comment under the video saying, so sorry, my best friend is and continues to be one of the best in the game. But here's a million dollar question. Did Selena know that by commenting on all of these TikToks, she was encouraging her fans to attack Hailey? Was it really all that calculated or was she just defending herself? We all know that Selena's fan base is 10 times the size of Hailey's. So was it that surprising that they pretty much took over the internet? Regardless of her intentions though, she's clearly trying to put a stop to it now and get her fan base to take a step back. This feud seems like it's been overwhelming for her too, and she's since decided to take a break from social media. In an Instagram post, Selena wrote, I'm 30, I'm too old for this. She said, I'm very happy, I'm so blessed, I have the best friends, the best fans in the whole world, and I just couldn't be happier. So at this point, she seems like she just wants the drama and all the bullying to die down, because it's obviously gotten way out of hand. Next up, guess who had a bad experience meeting Meghan Markle? It was Rebel Wilson, and she lived to tell the tale. During a recent appearance on Watch What Happens Live, she recalled the time that she ran into the royal couple in Santa Barbara. But interestingly enough, she got a very different vibe from both of them. She spoke about how Prince Harry could not have been nicer, whereas Meghan, on the other hand, was standoffish. She said, Meghan was not as cool. She wasn't as naturally warm. But Rebel thinks the reason she was cold was because her very Australian mom was asking her all of these slightly rude questions, like, where are your kids? which might have made her uncomfortable. The actress joked with her fellow guest John Oliver that the couple might have been thinking, who are these annoying convicts from Australia? Apparently she met Harry and Meghan through a mutual polo player friend, so she's somewhat more acquainted with them than you might think. But as you would have guessed, her story seems to have the internet divided. One user tweeted, the way Rebel Wilson first laughingly said that Meghan wasn't warm to her, jokingly setting the tone for some cheap laughs and anti-Meghan sentiment, and then brought up that her mom was rude to Meghan instead of speaking the other way around is Pete Corcassidy. Another person wrote, such misogyny towards Meghan Markle. Just really a bad look, Rebel Wilson. I hope everyone starts asking where your child is when you go out. You should apologize, rude is not okay. A lot of people pointed out how outrageous it was to expect Meghan to always respond with kindness, no matter what. Someone tweeted, hold on, Rebel Wilson's mom asked Meghan Markle rude questions, and now Rebel is prattling on about how Meghan wasn't naturally warm to them? There's a lot to unpick here, but let's start off with the fact that you can't expect someone to be welcoming when you are rude to them. But this is not the first time that Meghan has been accused of being difficult. Former staffers at Kensington Palace have come forward claiming that they were bullied by her while she lived there. It was so bad that two senior royal members of the palace staff were allegedly forced to leave their jobs. The couple's communications assistant at the time reported the behavior back in October of 2018. The complaint said, I'm very concerned that the Duchess was able to bully two PAs out of the household in the past year. The treatment of them was totally unacceptable. The Duchess seems intent on always having someone in her sights. I remain concerned that nothing will be done. In June, Buckingham Palace announced that they had investigated the incident, but those findings have remained private. In a book called Courtiers, The Hidden Power of the Crown, several members of staff then came out labeling her as a narcissist psychopath and claim that Harry and Meghan played them. Apparently, they also refer to themselves as the Sussex Survivors Club after they stopped working for the couple. In response, Meghan said that she was saddened by the attack on her character, particularly as someone who's been the target of bullying herself. In her podcast last year, she hit back at the claims again when she insisted that being particular is not the same thing as being difficult. Quote, you're allowed to set a boundary. You're allowed to be clear. It does not make you demanding. It doesn't make you difficult. It makes you clear. In terms of her being assertive, she said, I think a high tide raises all ships. We're all going to succeed. So let's make sure it's really great because it's a shared success for everybody. So from her perspective, she's just a tell it like it is person and there's nothing inherently wrong with that. Coming in number 10, Jim Carrey. 
Jim Carrey is an actor, comedian, writer, and producer known for his energetic slapstick performances. And Carrey first gained recognition in 1990 after landing a recurring role in the American sketch comedy television series called In Living Color. After hearing what happened to Chris Rock, Jim told CBS's Gail King that he was sickened not only by Smith's actions, but by Hollywood celebrities who still gave Smith a standing ovation for his best actor win for King Richard. He went on to say, Hollywood is just spineless en masse, and it felt like this is a really clear indication that we aren't the cool club anymore. I'd have announced this morning that I was suing Will for $200 million because that video is going to be there forever. It's going to be ubiquitous. That insult is going to last a very long time. If you want to yell from the audience and show disapproval or say something on Twitter, that's fine. But you do not have the right to walk up on stage and smack somebody in the face because they said words. But before we jump into our next point, make sure you tap that like button to show some love to the channel. In number nine, David Spade. Comedian David Spade and Chris Rock have been pals for a while now, so many were expecting him to release some sort of response to what took place at the Oscars. The pair first became good friends and comedic collaborators when they appeared on Saturday Night Live together in the 90s. They also co-starred in Adam Sandler's hit movie Grown Ups and the sequel Grown Ups 2. So knowing that they have a personal and working relationship, it only made sense that Spade would defend Chris. Initially, David tweeted, a G.I. Jane joke? Then when someone on Twitter asked why would you phrase this as a G.I. Jane joke instead of a joke about a woman with alopecia, he responded with, because comedians don't have a medical chart for everyone in the audience. In number eight, Kathy Griffin. Comedian Kathy Griffin was another celebrity defending Chris Rock after seeing Will Smith slap him. She tweeted out in response to what happened and said, Let me tell you something, it's a very bad practice to walk up on stage and physically attack a comedian. Now we all have to worry about who wants to be the next Will Smith in comedy clubs and theaters. Although many people in her replies were quick to pull up that photo of her holding a ketchup covered Donald Trump head as if to say that she did condone violence. Griffin made a valid point though, this will set an awful precedent for people feeling like they can approach a comedian on stage just when they don't like what they're hearing. Coming in number 7, Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj was another person defending Will in several tweets and said, I love Chris Rock. I don't think he would have made that joke had he known what Jada recently shared, but between him and the whole team at the Oscars, you mean to tell me not one of y'all heard this woman just share this heartbreaking story? Hashtag come on son. Adding in another tweet, you just got to witness in real time what happens in a man's soul when he looks over to the woman he loves and sees her holding back tears from a little joke at her expense. This is what any and every real man feels in that instant. While y'all seeing the joke, he's seeing her pain. In number six, Judd Apatow. Judd Apatow is also a comedian, director, producer, and screenwriter. He's also the founder of Apatow Productions, through which he has produced and directed the films The 40-Year-Old Virgin, Knocked Up, Funny People, This Is 40, Trainwreck, and The King of Staten Island. In response to what took place at this year's Oscars, Judd wrote in a since deleted tweet, he could have ended his life. That's pure out of control rage and violence. They've heard a million jokes about them in the last three decades. They are not freshmen in the world of Hollywood and comedy, he lost his mind. And the person who reposted his deleted tweet also commented on the matter and said, Judd Apatow getting ratioed to hell feels like a fitting end to the night. At number 5, The Kardashians. I don't know why Rock decided to dedicate part of his Netflix special to making fun of the famous family, but he did, and honestly, his jokes were nothing I haven't already heard before. The comedian decided to joke about the fact that in the past, the men that the Kardashians have dated or even married, most of that time are black. Rock said that Kris Jenner is like the Statue of Liberty, she lets everybody in. He then made a reference to Ye and Lamar Odom, Kim and Chloe's ex-husbands. Rock said, bipolar rapper, bring your butt here and then joked about Odom's substance issues. Rock then ended his round of jokes with, the Kardashians are inclusive, and they love black people more than black people love black people. The comedian then implied that the family is cursed to date black men because their father, Robert Kardashian, defended OJ Simpson in the 1995 trial. Finally, Rock joked that God appeared to Robert Kardashian and said that his daughters will only date, quote, crazy black people after he committed the sin of helping free OJ Simpson. In number four, John Leguizamo. John Leguizamo is an actor, comedian, producer, and writer. He first rose to fame with a co-starring role in Super Mario Bros. as Luigi and a supporting role in the crime drama known as Carlita's Way. In response to what happened at the Oscars, he told Entertainment Tonight that at first he thought that the moment was a sketch until he realized that there was no punchline coming. He went on to say, I thought Will's performance was amazing and I'm sorry that he tarnished it with this behavior. I mean, we all, nobody likes to be made fun of, but you gotta have a sense of humor about yourself. Can't take yourself that seriously. I mean, we're just acting, you know? Let's just relax. 
Very true. Number three, Jade is cheating. One user tweeted a video of two guys who burst out laughing with the caption, Chris Rock, we all have been cheated on, but we never had the person who cheated on us interview us on TV. In his special, Chris made fun of Will and Jada's relationship issues. He called out Jada for labeling her affair as an entanglement and putting it on the internet for the world to see. This all started in June of 2020, when singer August Azlina admitted that he had a relationship with Jada during an interview. He said, I totally gave myself to that relationship for years of my life and I truly and really really deeply love and have a ton of love for her. He also revealed that Will knew about it the whole time and had even given them his blessing. Although Jada initially denied the claims, she eventually confessed to being in an entanglement with August and she and her husband went on the red table talk to address it. The episode was both heartbreaking and kind of ridiculous because you could see that Will was genuinely hurt by his wife's affair. Meanwhile she was trying to label it as anything but. In the end the heartbreaking photo of Will glaring became became a meme, and everyone started googling the word entanglement. Coming number two, Joe Rogan. In a recent episode of his podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, Joe defended fellow comedian Chris Rock while condemning Will Smith's actions. While speaking with martial artist Josh Barnett, Rogan described Chris's joke as mild and said that this will set an awful precedent for comedy clubs. During the show, he said, First of all, that whole scene is a great example of what's wrong with the glorification of just being able to go up to someone and smack them in the face. Chris Rock's doing his effing job. There's a professional comedian whose job is to roast people. That's what he's doing and what he did wasn't even insulting. It was a mild joke. He then continued and said, you can't just go smack a man in the face in front of the world and go about business as usual. It sets a terrible precedent in so many different ways. It sets a terrible precedent for comedy clubs. Like are people going to decide that they're gonna go on stage and smack the comedian now? And last but certainly not least, our number one spot, Amy Schumer. Amy Schumer happened to also be performing some hosting duties at the Oscars this year, and so a lot of people wanted to hear her reaction to what happened as well, you know, seeing as though she was actually there. When interviewed about the incident, she said that she was still triggered and traumatized as she praised comedian Chris Rock for handling it like a pro after Will Smith stormed onto the stage and slapped him during the 94th award show. She also added in an Instagram post caption, I think we are all going to be processing tonight for a while. And then she also said in a deleted post, I think we can all agree that the best way to unpack what happened is to stream my series Life and Beth and see me on tour this fall. But for real, still triggered and traumatized. I love my friend Chris Rock and believe he handled it like a pro. Stayed up there and gave an Oscar to his friend Quest Love and the whole thing was so disturbing. So much pain in Will Smith. Anyway, I'm still in shock and stunned and sad. I'm proud of myself and my co-host, but yeah, waiting for this sickening feeling to go away from what we all witnessed. And at number 10, Jaden Smith. Celebrities are now reacting to Will Smith slapping Chris Rock at the Oscars and we've got everything you need to know. After Chris made that joke about Jada Pinkett Smith that caused Will to get him out of his seat and slap him, you can see the visible confusion on everyone's face. Some people gasped while others applauded him. And one of those people that are standing strong on Will's side though through all of this is his son Jaden. Although several other high profile celebrities are also reacting to the news as well. In response to the news though, Jaden Smith tweeted, and that's how we do it. In at number nine, Liam Payne. Liam Payne also was in attendance for the Oscars when this happened and was quoted by Good Morning Britain as saying, I believe whatever he felt that he did, he had the right to do. I had to leave my chair. I'll be honest with you, it cut me really deep. He then went on to say, I also felt like there was three losers in one fight. It's a very sad thing, but there was a powerful moment for me to sit and watch one of the world's best emoters speak from the heart, and I would rather take away the beauty from the situation than take the pain. But I had to leave my chair. I'll be honest with you, it cut me really deep. And in a break, the Academy. In response to what took place, the Academy tweeted, The Academy does not condone violence of any form. Tonight we are delighted to celebrate our 94th Academy Award winners who deserve this moment of recognition from their peers and movie lovers around the world. And as it turns out, this situation was much deeper than it had appeared. You see, this wasn't the first time that Chris Rock had made fun of the Smith family. Back in 2016, the comedian hosted the Academy Awards where both Will and Jada were in attendance. Rock made fun of Jada publicly, saying that she was going to be boycotting the show after another year of all-white acting nominees. At the time, he said, Jada said she's not coming. I was like, isn't she on a TV show? Jada's gonna boycott the Oscars? Jada boycotting the Oscars is like me boycotting boycotting around his panties. I wasn't invited. In at number seven, Howard Stern. Howard Stern is an American radio and television personality, comedian, and author. He's also best known for his radio show, The Howard Stern Show, which gained popularity when it was nationally syndicated on terrestrial radio from 1986 to 2005. He has since been broadcasting on SiriusXM satellite radio since 2006. 
During his show on Monday though, the radio host spoke about the Will Smith Chris Rock incident and said, This is a sign of great mental illness when you can't control your impulse. Not only that, it was hardly an insulting joke. It was not even a good joke. You don't provide security? You don't have someone come up there? Chris Rock was just trying to make people laugh at the effing ceremony which was so long and boring. In at number 6, Kathy Griffin. Comedian Kathy Griffin was another celebrity giving her two cents on the whole situation. She tweeted out in response to Will slapping Chris and said, Let me tell you something, it's a very bad practice to walk up on stage and physically assault a comedian. Now we all have to worry about who wants to be the next Will Smith in comedy clubs and theaters. Although many people in her replies were quick to pull up that photo of her holding a ketchup covered Donald Trump head as if to say that she condoned violence in some sense. Griffin made a valid point though, this will set an awful precedent for people feeling like they can just approach a comedian on stage if they don't like what's being said. Number 5 Megyn Kelly The former Fox News anchor tweeted out a Daily Mail article talking about Chris Rock's comments on Meghan Markle. Apart from jokes about Will Smith, the comedian also spoke about the royal couple, and he made it very clear that he has little sympathy for them. He said, Everyone is trying to be the victim, including people who know damn well they're not victims. He mentioned Meghan Markle specifically, and said that she does seem like a nice lady, but said that he wasn't happy with her complaining in the Oprah interview. Chris said she shouldn't be so shocked by the prejudices within the royal family, because that's essentially what they're known for. Meghan Kelly obviously agreed with his jokes and has always supported the comedian in his feud with Will Smith. Right after the Oscars incident, she claimed that the the actor was trying to make himself look like a tough guy standing up for his partner, but that's something that most people would have handled backstage instead of making it all so public. Megan insisted that he used his two minutes on the stage to defend his actions when he should have been apologizing immediately after the slap. Coming number four, The View. As one would assume, all of the daytime talk shows were going to be talking about the now infamous slap heard around the world. The View, however, had a mixed bag of reactions from their hosts. Sonny Hostin said, I think Will was immature, I think he was childish, and he was violent with Whoopi Goldberg saying, there will be consequences, I'm sure, but I don't think that's what they're going to do, particularly because Chris said, listen, I'm not pressing any charges. Anna Navarro didn't mince her words though and said, hitting somebody is a crime, a crime of assault, while she called Rock's quip a lean joke, a joke in very poor taste. She believes the slap and the remark were not equivalent. While Joy Behar chose to speak on the impact that this will have on comedians everywhere. Behar remarked, they want us comedians to be edgy, to go out there and say what everyone's thinking, and then they get mad. At number three, Meghan Markle. Going hand in hand with his digs at the royal family, Rock went even harder on Markle herself. During that interview with Oprah, Markle said that the royal family had quote, concerns and conversations about how dark her son's skin would be before he was born. But you probably knew that because, like I said, this topic is kind of old news. Anyway, Rock said that some of the issues Markle described as being racism was really just typical in-law stuff. He talked about how, as she was complaining, he was thinking, what the F is she talking about? Rock then elaborated on his thoughts, saying, Oprah Oprah, they're so racist. They wanted to know how brown the baby was going to be. I'm like, that's not racist because even black people want to know how brown the baby's going to be. Rock then went on to say that it is harder for white women with black in-laws because the in-laws are going to say something and make jokes at the white woman's expense. I'm not saying that Rock's special wasn't funny by any means, I just feel like his digs at Markle and the royal family were a bit weak. If you're gonna joke about them, it better be hilarious, cause as I mentioned earlier, we've heard so many already. In number 2, Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell is an American comedian, producer, actress, author, and television personality. She began her comedy career as a teenager and received her breakthrough on the television series Star Search in 1984. Her response to this incident though was that the Academy did not do enough after Will smacked Chris. In her tweet she said, So upsetting on every level. Bravo to Chris Rock for not eviscerating Will Smith, which he could do any day of the week. He walked away. Bravo from a sad display of toxic masculinity from a narcissistic madman. And last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Will Smith. The main person that everyone wanted wanted to hear a reaction from though was Will Smith himself. Yes, he sort of touched on what happened during his acceptance speech, but later on we got a full letter addressing the controversy. In response to how the world reacted to him slapping Chris Rock, Will said, Violence in all of its forms is poisonous and destructive. My behavior at last night's Academy Awards was unacceptable and inexcusable. Jokes at my expense are a part of the job, but a joke about Jada's medical condition was too much for me to bear and I reacted emotionally. I would like to publicly apologize to you, Chris. I was out of line and I was wrong. I am embarrassed and my actions were not indicative of the man I want to be. There is no place for violence in a world of love and kindness. I would also like to apologize to the Academy, the producers of the show, all the attendees, and everyone watching around the world. I would like to apologize to the Williams family and my King Richard family. I deeply regret that my behavior has strained what has been an otherwise gorgeous journey for all of us. I am a work in progress. Sincerely, Will.